Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Ambassador Luis Gilberto Murillo of the Republic of Colombia and Concordia's Matthew Swift. Gracias, Matthew. Ambassador, thank you very, very much for coming uh, to the seventh Concordia America Summit. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you very much, Matthew, for, for the invitation. I think, it's an I think, honor. I think you will find uh, such a large group of those who are participating in this summit uh, coming from Colombia. Uh, so you have quite a lot of your, uh, uh, your fellow citizens here. Excellent, because, well, you know, South Florida, Miami, you have like the second uh, population here by countries are Colombians. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about a million Colombians living in this area, so I feel like very close to home, and we have our uh, general counsel here, uh, major general, mm -hmm. retired, uh, William Salamanca, so he knows that we have large, large population of Colombians here. Fantastic. Um, well, I understand uh, you have uh, some remarks for us, and then we'll have a conversation. Well, I can say something. Yeah. Wonderful, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Very honored to be here. Uh, good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. An honor to speak uh, to all of you today about the significance of life and peace in reframing the Colombia and the U.S. bilateral relation, particularly under these ideas of having a new pact for life and peace. Historically, our close partnership has promoted democracy and shared values in the region. Having recently celebrated 200 years of diplomatic relations, we begin to write our shared history for the next 200 years, a history that reflects our country's new realities and further strengthens our democracies. As Colombians, uh, we all have a unique opportunity. But also, Matthew, we have that opportunity jointly with the United States. We have the unique opportunity to shape a more sustainable and inclusive Colombia-United States partnership that will drive positive change for generations to come. We represent a center-left government led by President Petro and Vice President Francia Marquez, who is the first black woman to be president of our country. We are committed to bringing peace to Colombia, safeguarding the environment, and transitioning to cleaner energies, working on environmental conservation and peace that are two independent aspects of sustainable development but also for inclusion, diversity, and social justice. The benefit of environmental conservation go beyond protecting the natural world. It promotes stability, social cohesion, and economic development. Conversely, conflict and instability significantly affect negatively the environment and also exacerbate the effect of climate change and also natural resources and our communities. Those negative effects are very evident in many regions in Colombia, including my own region of Chocó. We can unlock new solutions, resources, and strategies when we approach environmental conservation as, and peace as bilateral issue. Such an approach fosters a deeper understanding of each other's needs and aspirations, creating shared vision and mutual accountability for achieving sustainable goals. Lastly, to make bilateral relations work, we must start by acknowledging the role of stakeholders, all and new, including government, civil society organizations, community organizations, ethnic minorities and majorities, as we said in Colombia, and the private sector. The private sector in particular plays a critical role in supporting and implementing sustainable development initiatives. 
Companies that embrace sustainability practices contribute to environmental conservation and peace. And we need peace in Colombia. In conclusion, I want to emphasize that environmental conservation and peace within the framework of social justice for communities are fundamental to achieving sustainable development and moving towards sustainable development goals. Bilateral relations can be a potent tool to advance these objectives by promoting mutual understanding, cooperation, and accountability from both sides. I can invite you to seize the, this opportunity and to be catalyst for positive change both in Colombia and the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those remarks. And um, Ambassador, I'd, I'd love to start if we can. Let's talk about Colombia and then let's talk about Washington. Oh. Um, Colombia, talk a bit about, you had, a, you had a peace agreement, implementation of that agreement. You made reference in, in your remarks uh, specifically about that desire for peace. What, what is the state of the implementation of the agreement today? Well, we have a very central policy in Colombia, led by President Petro and Francia Marquez, which is the policy of total peace. Because it's the, the aspiration of Colombian society always has been to reach peace and uh, to really have the opportunity to create prosperity under normal conditions. Uh, in the framework of total peace, we have three lines that I would like to highlight. First is the full implementation of the uh, peace agreement that was signed be, with the former FARC rebels. Very important. Within that, in our conversation with the US government, in a visit of uh, Secretary Blinken to Colombia, mm -hmm. uh, he was very clear that one of the main emphasis of uh, the US policy toward Colombia is supporting that agreement, particularly the ethnic chapter, to support black and indigenous communities in certain areas that have been uh, left behind by the development of the country, and that create conditions for violence and not for peace. The second line of that, Matthew, is in relation to uh, negotiation with ELN. So Colombia resumed that negotiations. Now we have a cycle of those negotiations in Mexico. And the goal is to really reach an agreement with ELN that have political origins, uh, genesis, and the third line in that is how you uh, like uh, uh, have discussion for criminal networks in certain regions to be subject to justice under certain conditions, like giving up uh, networks, their weapons, information to dismantle uh, particularly those networks that are associated with drug trafficking. That's the framework of, of, of peace. And always having in the center of those discussions the victims of the conflict. Shifting gears to the environment uh, seems to be a, a significant focus to, for this government. Um, we've talked quite a bit at this summit about the Amazon rainforest. And, uh, Talk a little bit about what the country is doing as it relates to both the environment, but also uh, around what opportunities might exist for business in terms of, of, of investment within that space. Well, you know, I had this conversation with President Petro when we were discussing the uh, um, like key objectives and priorities within the bilateral relation. And, and I was saying, well, the first priority is peace. And he said, well, you know what, with the United States, is climate, environment, and protection of biodiversity. And he has been very focused on how we can protect the Amazon, how we can protect what we call the, Choco, the biographical Choco, which is this ecosystem that goes from Costa Rica to Ecuador, passing through the Pacific coast. So that's a huge priority. Colombia is the, and you know that much, Colombia is the most biodiverse country in the world. The first in terms of number of species by square kilometer, more than Brazil. Uh, but 
we need policies that can continue the path that Colombia has, but deepen that with the participation of communities. What the opportunity you have under the model that include communities, like indigenous communities, black communities, communities in rural areas, you can create new wealth, protecting the environment, fulfilling the, the, the sustainable development goals. One example of that, carbon market. Colombia has tremendous opportunities to attract a lot of investment to do, uh, uh, to, at least to participate in that market. Second, you have a lot of opportunities in continuing developing uh, energy generation based on non-conventional source of energy, like wind and solar, photovoltaic. So that's, that's part of a policy package that you put within the framework of energy transition. A lot of opportunity to do that. And in connection with the relationship with the United States, you have this uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which is more policy for energy transition. You have the infrastructure uh, uh, bill that was approved. I think that Colombia, having the free trade agreement, can attract a lot of investment, taking opportunity of the near shoring policy that you are implementing or at least you want to implement in the region. We need to put Latin America and Colombia in the center of those policies. So you're now in Washington as the, as the ambassador from Colombia. One of the objectives of this summit and the reason for this multi-year collaboration with the University of Miami is on how to elevate Latin America, not just within the hemisphere, but also globally as a, as a more consistent point of conversation and advancement. It feels, in many, many ways, that Colombia and Latin America are not at the forefront in, on issues in the way that they should be in the context of the United States. And, and in this environment here, we spend a lot of time talking about other parts of the world. How do you change that as ambassador? Well, I think that, and I agree with you, and, uh, and it's very important that Concordia really have this kind of summit of the Americas to put our issues uh, on the agenda, because the reality is that we are uh, losing momentum in Washington, D.C. Part of that is because, and, and that's my personal opinion, is because here in the United States, you tend to look at other regions and not really looking down south. Just when you see some problems, there, like emergencies and crises, but you don't, you don't see the region as really your stronghold. Uh, as a hemisphere, and that need to that, that, that need to change. That's 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 something that you have to do. But also in in from our part, I think that Latin America need more li like good leadership that unite the region, including the particularities of the region. Latin America is very diverse. How you put the concern of the entire population of the region on the agenda. Let me give you one example, and that applies for the United States and Latin America. Uh, Afro-descendant people, black people, 25% of Latino American people in the United States identify themselves as black. But they are not part of the agenda of Latino communities, often. And that's the same for Latin America. 30% like of Latin America is black, but they are not part of the agenda. They need to be part of it. And then come to DC with unified agenda that said, that the country said, you know what? This is what the region wants. First, how we respond jointly to the challenges of climate change. There is no solution to the problem of climate change and environmental conservation in the United States without Latin America and the Caribbean, yeah. period. So it seems to me that beyond ideologies, beyond political differences, beyond policy preferences, the region need to identify five agenda points that can really sit down with the United States and negotiate those. Because what the United States does usually, and sometimes is that, for example, in the case of Colombia, obviously we are very important partner of the United States. We have particular relation with the United States, special relation, key partners. You just recently uh, celebrated 200 years. 200 years. But you know what, Colombia said, okay, I will resolve my problems, but I, I 
I don't think much about the rest of the region. That needs to change. We need leadership that works towards the unity of the region. Historically, I've always seen Latin America as a bit of a, as a bipartisan subject in Washington, D.C. until recently, until the last five, six years. It seems that that has changed. For you as an ambassador in Washington, how are you operating within such a polarizing political time here in the U.S.? One thing is very, seems very, very naive. You have to smile. You know, to be happy, so you have to smile. It's like you cannot go like mad, you know. No, you have to smile and say, you know, we need to talk. And you have to talk. Dialogue is very important. We need to dialogue. We need to have conversations, meaningful conversation, based on evidence. Based on evidence, because there is a lot of rhetoric. Let me, let me, let me put you, uh, at least to give you one example. Colombia. They say, oh my God, they have President Petro, who is a leftist, extremist, whatever it is. And then you see the evidence is that it's not like that. He's very pragmatic. Uh, he is somebody, Colombia have the, 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 like the, the best democracy in, in the region now. You know that. It's like our system of check and balances is working. And President Petro is supporting that. He's talking to the opposition. People thought that was impossible that President Petro will talk to President Uribe. No, they, they not just talk. They are collaborating in certain issues. Difficult issues, issues of land, issues of accessing uh, 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 some territories in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. They are collaborating, very interesting, with the First Lady of Colombia, they are collaborating on issues of supporting children. And third, Colombia have this very particular uh, characteristic that is there is agreement, societal agreement on environment. There is a lot, some consistency in the policy that they started long, long before, and different governments are continuing that policy. You have very good programs that comes out of that experience in Colombia. So what I'm saying is the United States, we need to do something like that. And navigating that, it's like, I have conversation. If you see the partisan and political ideologies, we have a framework that is bipartisan. We need to protect that. We, Colombia have to be very clear that we need to protect the bipartisan way of approaching Washington. I have conversation with Bernie Sanders. Good conversation. We talk about different issues, including health. <laughs> and also I have conversation with uh, Representative Maria Salazar, Mario diaz Balar. Good conversation on issues that keep, we can work together. And that's the way to find those issues and start building trust. Shifting gears for a minute, we had a session yesterday focused on migration. Uh, Colombian-Venezuelan border. Where do you see the situation going forward in Venezuela? Well, uh, we obviously want the, the challenges that Venezuela has like, been resolved. Uh, because it's, the country that is most affected by this situation, by this crisis, is Colombia. Colombia welcome, and it's a state policy, welcome almost 2.5 million Venezuelans, migrants. And it is very costly economically. Like two points of our GDP goes to that. And that's an example for the United States. And, and asking for uh, migration, some kind of alleviation of our situation of Colombians here that are undocumented. Mm -hmm. So I need allies on doing that. So maybe Concordia will help us <laughs> in doing this. But, uh, 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 and it's not so costly as, as, as supporting Venezuelans in Colombia. So we are looking for some reciprocity in that mm -hmm. regard. But yeah, uh, we have challenges. In the past, the region and the U.S. tried different approaches to Venezuela, different tools, didn't work. So what we are doing is normalizing the relationship, but not the situation, the relationship, the diplomatic relationship, and also looking at three points because of the realities. Security, we need to respond to that. The reality of trade, we need to respond to that. Humanitarian, humanitarian reality for Colombians there and for Venezuelans in, 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 in Colombia and also resolving the key problem of having the political crisis. We need the, the, the opposition in, uh, in Venezuela and the government in Venezuela to really reach an agreement to have fair, competitive, transparent elections. So that's the goal uh, 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 that we look forward to, to reach. And also President Petro is playing 
very uh, uh, constructive role in doing that. In my uh, portfolio as ambassador here, I have um, very uh, permanent conversation with Venezuelan opposition uh, in looking for ways to really have a resolution to democratic uh, challenges of Venezuela. Uh, lastly, in, in closing, um, where do you see Colombia in the next 10 years? What, are you, what would you like to see uh, as the most important advancement for the country? Peace. I think that we need to uh, uh, really get this aspiration and to reach the goal of having a Colombia that is living in peace. Uh, and the second is, is related to inclusion. I think that we are moving forward in a good pace in terms of social inclusion and regional inclusion. Uh, but I, I would like to see Colombia that is very uh, um, inclusive and is very fair for all Colombians. And also having Colombia that is a model in terms of, I'm saying, Patricia, in terms of life and peace, but particularly in terms of how we manage our environmental and natural wealth. Well, Ambassador, thank you very, very much for coming. It's an thank honor you, to have thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you very much. Thank you.